<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. People like Jordan Peterson and I have major differences with him on sort of the content of his ideas, uh, not about academia, but on academia, he's right completely. And I'm totally in solidarity with him, what they did to him and what they're doing to him. Uh, we need more people like him standing up and saying, no, I'm going to say what I want in my classrooms and on Twitter. And in, because that's people have been punished for that, too. Well, they're trying to get him to stop doing his YouTube lectures. I know. Which is fascinating I know. because they're very measured. They're long form. He gets to expand on his thoughts as much as he likes. He's very, mm. very informed. Sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, I he's mean, a, I, I, again, I, I have major disagree. Dis what is the disagreement? Disagreements with him on gender and postmodernism. I think he's completely off. But you know, how so on gender? So, so he, and I know you, you agree with him on this. I think. Well, maybe I don't know. I'm not sure, but you know, it's this idea that there just are two genders. That's it, and they're no, they're attached to biology. Think that. Good. Okay. No, he seems to think that. Um, so I think there's a spectrum of humans in every single aspect of yeah, being a person. I should say I heard your conversation with him, and I could see, and this was interesting to me, it was exciting, because I could actually see you moving in a direction that I found to be much more interesting than his, which is <laughs> closer to mine, which is, yeah, that it, this, it's well, fluid. there's feminine men, there's masculine women. Go there's, to Thailand. Uh, the, yeah, for go sure. Go to Thailand. Right. In fact, speaking, here we go, merging all these topics together, one of the top Muay Thai fighters recently, I don't know if she's still fighting, is a lady boy. Mm-hmm. In yeah. Thailand, you know. Well, once she became, once she got the operation, her performance dropped off pretty radically. Yeah, sure, but that's yeah. just lack of testosterone. And I know your thing about having... uh, Fallon Fox. Yes. And I, so I agree with you there. So here's yeah. the thing. Okay. It's a different story. This, I totally agree with you on that particular thing, right? Yeah. Whether she should have been allowed to fight. Well, it's not that she should have been allowed to fight. I think she should be allowed to fight. Women? As long as the women know that okay. she used to be a man. That's the fine problem too. was for the first two fights, she didn't disclose it right. because she said it was a medical procedure and she didn't have to give up the personal details of her medical procedure. I say that's bullshit. Right. I say, well, you're dealing with a chromosomal issue. You're, you're dealing with the fact that you have a different bone structure, yes. different mechanical advantages, right. and 30 years of testosterone in your body. Yes. It's just not the same. Exactly. But as long as someone knows, Look, I'm fine with Jermaine Duran to me. She knocked down a man. I don't know if you ever saw that I, fight. I did. She's, uh, Do you think she's juiced? She's not juiced. No. She? Oh, she's yeah, just right. fucking badass. Awesome. Yeah, she's just she's awesome. She's just fucking badass. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what if she's taken anything in her entire career. It would just be pure speculation. Yeah. She doesn't look like she has, no. but that doesn't mean anything either. Right, right. But she's so fucking badass and so technical and so I know. tough I know. that she's fought men, but she knew they were a man going in. She made a decision, just like I think you should be allowed to skydive, mm -hmm. just like I think you should be allowed to ride bulls. I don't think it's smart, right. but you should be able to do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm all for freedom of expression, of participation in any sort of dangerous activity. My issue, 100%, was that people are trying to pretend that there's no advantage whatsoever. And yeah. that's crazy. That's silly. So the thing is, what they're... So within that framework, within the rules we are operating in, right, whether it's in fighting or whether it's in, you know, this particular society. Or the wrestling girl in rest, Texas. Yeah, I read all about that, too. Yeah, right, exactly. So those are that's a particular rule. You're, you are agreeing to play a particular game. Right. Right? And you're just breaking the rules. That's all. I mean, you have, you have sort a of. body. Well, They're right, letting I, them break the rules. I, the rules are not, and I think a lot of it is people worried about being called transphobic or homophobic or in any way prejudiced, where they're allowing certain people to compete in these, like this woman in Australia, the trans woman in Australia that just broke all these world records in weightlifting because she was a fucking man her whole life. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden became a woman and is just killing everybody and in then weightlifting. And the, there's the, uh, the runners in, I think they're from Kenya yeah. or, or South Africa. No, the one from South Africa right. in particular. I forget her name. But What do you mean the one that's like a hermaphrodite? Who? Well, I don't know what she is, but she's broken every record by like, you know, huge, right. insane amounts. So and I think she's just a woman with an abnormally large amount of testosterone. I think they've actually yeah. done chromosomal tests on her. I don't her. know. When I saw her in the Olympics, I just... Yeah, but that's just, the thing. It just jumped out at me. Pull, just... pull that up because I'm pretty sure that that woman actually has been tested and then there was a real issue behind it and she felt terrible about it because it was just the way she was born. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, the spectrum. Yeah, I could... Look, there's men what a... that sure. have tremendous amounts of testosterone and there's men that have like almost none. That's actually the major point we need to talk about. You're totally on the right track there. I totally agree with that. That's the most important thing, which is that there's a spectrum, right? Yes. And so to say that there are, that 50% of the world is male and 50 percent is female nonsense or man and man or what right thank that you it's black and white. i say to, i say to my students i say okay 
there's 7 billion people in the world. Okay, imagine in your mind lining all of them up, you know, naked in front of you. How many sexes do you see? Right? This is what I want you to do. Right? Get a picture of Yoel Romero and put it next to a picture of Andy Dick. <laughs> Tell me they're the same thing. <laughs> Tell me this is even. They're both men. Tell me it's even. It's uh, nonsense. <laughs> I mean, right. it's chaos. Yeah, I've, you know, it's like, have you ever heard a guy on the street say, man, that's a lot of women? Yes. Well, that suggests there are women who are less women to them. You know, sort exactly. of. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. There's a spectrum. And yeah. there's also a spectrum in sizes. I mean, that's why so there's So let me ask classes. you this. Okay, so let's push it a little further. Okay. Then. So, so far, you're doing very well. <laughs> oh, in your eyes. <laughs> Some people are screaming at their fucking oh, computer Oh, believe right me. I know. Fucking commies. Believe me. I know. Um, Roman's uh, going homo. So that's... Well, no, I think you already are... I think you already <clears throat> went all the way, actually. I mean, so what... There's two things. There, there's, there's the Jordan Peterson view. I don't think he very, has that view. Hang on. Let me let me put it out there. Let me. Okay. What I think is he's saying, which is that gender is fixed and biologically determined. I'm pretty sure he does believe that. Hmm. Okay. That's what I would call sort of the traditional conservative conventional Look at that. view. Those are both men. Yeah. Exactly. Jesus. Or Christ. not. Or you know what? Or like. There's more than two categories in the world, right? And so Andy Dick would be one, and well, Yul Romero would be another. Sexually, and I, where would you put me there? I mean, I'm, I'm neither one of those guys. You're in the middle there. I'm neither one of them. You're you, well. See, the thing, the deal is, both of them can procreate with women. Okay, so uh, yeah, technically but not, they're oh, both male. But, but but a whole lot of tech, people who are called men cannot procreate with women. A whole lot. What do you mean? They mean trans women? No, no, no. Trans men? No, they can't. It doesn't work. Oh, so they don't develop sperm? Yeah, or really? some, yeah, of course. Is that really common? Uh, yeah, I, weren't you tested when when you were trying to get pregnant? No, I just knocked her up, dude. Come on. Well, Son, maybe I, I never maybe tested I wasn't my loads. Either. But anyway, it certainly was a just thing. Just shot him in there and watched the fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. See, you're more of a man. You've just proven uh, yet again that you're more the of a man. woman. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Well, when you see, yeah, that's not a great picture. It doesn't give you a sense of how it does. Though. Look at the thighs and the bulge. Yeah, the she. Look at the bulge. Well, three times as high as most women. Whoa. Okay, so <sighs> reports leaked out. That doesn't really mean anything. I don't though. think she's ever really been tested. I believe she has. See if she's been tested. What does the test say? But it leaked. She was subjected to sex verification test after she won the world championships in Germany. And what does it say? Yeah, leak, okay, so leaked. The so results were supposed to be confidential, but reports leaked out that she had testosterone levels three times as high as most women. Other intimate details about her anatomy were also reported. Yeah. Uh, Semenya became targeted. Semenya? Semenya? Yeah. That, how brutal. Your first name is Se The first part of your name is Semen. <laughs> Semenya. Uh, became targeted uh, with abuse on social media. Um, but what does it say? Is it, so is it saying that she's a hermaphrodite? Because it, they were talking about her. You know what this is? The clitoral size, it's maybe? The, it's the equivalent of, of pretty much every article written about Trump by the New York Times. Why? You know, a, a, report, you a report was leaked by, you know, senior right. officials said, where's the actual evidence of any of this stuff? I don't see it. Yeah, what is it? It doesn't say anything. Doesn't so matter. she passed the test. Doesn't matter. She must have passed the test. Doesn't matter. Here's the thing. I Her think semen. If, I were, if I were a woman athlete, right? Yeah. Um, I would want rules established. Um, it's like I would want rules established defining the physical characteristics of any of my potential opponents. Mm. Right? So it could be whatever, bone density, muscle mass, you know testosterone levels, you name it. You, you, you could probably speak to this better than I could, but I'm sure there's all sorts of ways you could actually define that pretty precisely. And you can test those things and you can say, okay, you get to be in this. It's like weight classes and, and fighting. It's no different really, right? I mean, you're not allowed to fight someone who's 30 pounds lighter than you are. And right. so you could do that in any sport. You could say, right, if you're above a certain height or above a certain weight or have this much muscle or that much testosterone, you're not allowed in this category, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing sexist about that. There's nothing anti-trans about that. It's just a different category. But that's all that matters, right? That if that is the the problem was that Fallon Fox had, as you said, more muscle, more testosterone, all these physical characteristics that were fundamentally different than all of the other women fighting in that category in that particular game. That's all you got to do. Well, the, the problem is that you can do damage to the person. I know. It's not as simple as like playing basketball it's against terrible. someone who had more testosterone. Yeah, it's terrible to do that. But there's also like, 
there's a, a type of thinking that's involved in discussing this where the, you, you have to follow a line of thinking. And if you don't follow a line of thinking, you're transphobic, you're a hateful person, mm-hmm. you're a bigot. Yeah. And that line of thinking is not science-based. It's just not. When you, when you talk to board-certified endocrinologists where they talk about trans people, mm-hmm. one of the things that they talk about is the fact that when you take estrogen, it actually maintains bone density. It's the reason why they give estrogen to women who have osteoporosis. So this idea that your bone density decreases when you go from being a man to a woman, it's bullshit. You're taking testosterone, your bone density is going to stay the same or get thicker. But if you're taking estrogen, your bone density is also going to maintain. It's going to help you maintain. So when you remove the body's ability to produce testosterone on its own, there was a whole article in um, Bloody Elbow of Mm -hmm. MMA by this uh, board-certified endocrinologist, Dr. Ramona Krutzik. And what she did different than everything else, all these other articles, is she's not a gender reassignment surgeon. Okay, all these other people that are commenting on this have a vested interest in it being completely neutral. Hmm. There's all these people that are trans people that are commenting on it, and they're doing it from a very biased perspective. Because we're not talking about mountain biking, which there was a a woman who used to be a man who dominated mountain biking, and it became a giant issue with people. Hmm. They first supported her, and then she was winning by such enormous margins. They were like, well, what the fuck? Same as the woman in Australia that's the weightlifter. This is different. This is fighting. Yeah. And I think fighting uniquely. Fallon Fox almost killed that woman. She beat the f- shit out of a few girls. But then she lost to Ashley Evan Smith, who is a biological female. You know, so it's you can beat someone like that. But again, Ronda Rousey would probably beat the fuck out of most 135 pound men in the world of that she meets. Of course. You know, it's just so, a matter of skill level. It's no different than PED, like banning PEDs. We want to do that, don't right. we? Right. It's yes. the same thing. It's altering the body's chemistry, its abilities, right? And so you don't want to compete against someone who sure. has that difference. Right? Unless you know, right? As unless you were just you know. saying. And then right. you can t- or unless you're allowed to do the same thing, then it's all fair. But but you couldn't. You would, uh, the yeah. woman would have to take testosterone and balance it out. <clears throat> and then you'd have to find out how would you balance out 30 years of right. your body naturally producing testosterone, increasing your ligament strength, increasing right. your tendon strength. Yeah. You also have the, the mechanical advantages of male hips are very different when it comes to kicking, when it comes to certain types of movement. Women's hips go out and then their legs kind of come in at an angle. And it's not... Not right. the best for kicking. It's not the best for a lot of different activities. Right. It's different. So I would just say that a trans woman um, is absolutely, in my view, a woman. Fine. You know, I don't. That's their identity, and I respect that. However, they want to identify, and because w- the category of woman, as you said, is so fluid. You know, let. I'm not going to say there's any absolute about that either. That it can change, and it's you know comes from her ideas. Right. But it's still, I respect that, and I'll call you a woman. I'll treat you like a woman. But that means we have to change the sports, right? And we have to have just different categories. Instead of yes. woman sports and man sports, we need to have, and woman and man categories in those sports, we need to have different categories that are about people's physical composition, how, what you're made up of, right? So it, just like weight classes and PEDs, there's no difference to me. Well, or right? there could be the argument that a person, a trans woman is a woman, but when you're talking about athletic competition, you're talking about a very biological thing. I'm saying if you and take the, you might have to say that someone has to be a biological female to compete against. But I'm saying females. if you take the gender out of the sport, right? If you take the, if you stop calling okay. these gendered names, then it's then it's definitely not tra- a trans issue. Hmm. It's just about what your body's made up of. So, for so instance, instead of just weight classes, like Jermaine Duran to me is pro. I don't know. Well, Ronda Rousey more likely is probably made up just physically, uh, more like closer to a man. Closer to Yoel Romero than Andy Dick. How dare you? <clears throat> she's going to find this, and she's going to find you. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, Someone likes to be hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Choked out real fast. Um, yeah, so so that means I would just say, you know, there should be a, a category, you know, of in the sport, you know, for people who are made up of that composition. And that could be people the the society identifies as men and who are, or who identify as women or whatever. Oh man, that's a, that's a slippery slope. Why? There's a lot of work there. Yeah. Because like, uh, what, I mean, how would you define it? What parameters would you use? Bone density? Well, you know, a a lot of African American women have similar bone density to white males. So does that mean you should be able to fight black chicks? Uh, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. 
It depends, right? So, well, no, actually, they kind of are doing it. So Ann the, Wolf this might thing fuck with, you up. This thing, oh, man. I'm, I'm not messing with Ann Wolf. Even though she's, like, what, 60 years old, she could still she's crush me. She's probably 50. She could crush me. Um, no, but, I mean, they are doing it. In fact, we just saw this with, what's her name? Uh, Castor Samania. But, oh, what are they doing with her? Well, this, it's the thing about testosterone levels. But what are they there's doing? Actually are they threshold. making her? No, there's, there, there's a number for testosterone that oh. you have to be below, right? To, f to compete in that sport as a woman. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Just add more categories, not just testosterone. You have to have, that's what this says. Okay, it says if right here. If your testosterone here. goes above a certain level, you're not allowed to compete as a woman. So I'm saying have that category and add more categories like that. And mm. don't call it woman and men, just say it's category X. You get to compete in this category if your testosterone, Androgen, yeah, but whatever, you see what they're saying though? Levels. But it's, it's so ridiculously loose. It's saying a female with hypoandrogenism who is recognized as a female in law shall be eligible to compete in women's competition in athletics provided that she has androgen levels below the male range. Like all you have to do is just be like a couple notches below the male range, which is way above. But I'm saying that's oh, all wow. objectively determined. You can do that. They're, they're trying to get her to take suppression medication she or... She that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. See what I'm, yeah, this is all proving my on, point. But... These are objectively determined. So we they're have, making her tone it down. We have numbers, right? Hmm. We say if you hit this number for this category, you don't get to compete here. But this is so, so rare. I mean, she has a disease essentially where she produces too much testosterone. But it would apply to trans people is what I'm saying, mm. right? So if, if you... But would it? Because even so, you're, you're still dealing with the mechanical advantages of the male frame, the wider shoulders, especially when it comes to hitting. We could do that too. Yeah. We do it with weight. We do it with weight already. Why not? Uh, Height, sure. Boy, in fact, a lot of work. In fact, there. I've thought about that, right? Have you? You, you, well, look, you, I'm sure you have too. Like in weight classes, right? Like I have a huge advantage. I always use it. I'm six one, one sixty five, and I have really long arms. Mm -hmm. So, like most of the time, people can't get inside my jab. Like I just put it out there, they can, and it's just a thing. It's a, but it's a. And I often feel like this isn't really fair in a way. <laughs> you know, I don't have to be as good as they are. Mm -hmm. I can be looser, and it's true for a lot of fighters. But right? once they get inside on you, they have an advantage. Like uh, Mike Tyson no. used that advantage of being five ten on a lot of I don't fighters. Know if it was an advantage. I think he just was really good at overcoming it. Hmm. I think there's he, an he advantage had a way. in fighting and having shorter arms and he did the being lower. He did the peekaboo. Past the jab, he maximized really, his really style. well. Really, really, he did that thing. Where, As did Rocky Marciano. And then he he had a really good way of getting in, of of, of slipping the jab and moving constantly until mm -hmm. he was inside on you, and then he would crush you with his huge left hook. But once he's there, he doesn't have an advantage on you. He's just there, and he's Mike Tyson. But you don't think it's harder <laughs> for a guy with long ass spider arms to punch a guy who is in tight on you with short arms and is throwing shots to the body like Tyson would do? So. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's advantages as long as you're like physically competent. There's advantages in particular movements and positions to all sorts of different body styles. It's very true in jujitsu. Guys with long arms and long legs in mm -hmm. jujitsu have massive advantages sure. with chokes. You guys can get darces yeah. and guillotines right. and triangles easier, but you can also get arm barred easier. There's mechanical advantages in arm barring you. There's mm -hmm. there's there's some weird advantages to being like a Husamar Paul Haras, stocky short guy. Well, here's bas how about basketball? There there you go. Oh, it's all right? advantages to okay. being tall, right? And in fact, there are leagues, not actually there might be professional leagues, which are, you know, six feet and under leagues. Really? Same th yeah. Many leagues. Oh, many. many people. This is very common because <laughs> most people are under six feet tall, right? So who could never play in the NBA, hmm. even though they're amazing basketball players, but they just don't have the arm length and they don't have the height and all that. That's so, interesting. So we just need, need more divisions. The UFC should have like, you know, welterweight should be there should be heights within it too. Isaiah Height Thomas divisions. was only five nine. Oh, this is a current Isaiah Thomas. He's a That's really a good player for the number one he's East fantastic. team in the East. He's he's a great. Oh. a lot of guys that are under six he's foot a, though. He's a great great player. Or around six foot, they get listed higher too. Yeah, like they, they cheat. Say Interesting. Six, yeah, he's, six, two, so he's six, sort of the exception that proves the rule. He's five nine, but he's really he's well. You remember Muggsy successful. Bogues? Yeah, he's five Wasn't three. Wasn't he like five six or something five, like that? Three. Yeah. Five three. Muggsy yeah. was five three and dunked. No, he didn't dunk. Spud yes, Webb. he did. Five seven. Spud Webb. No, I'm pretty sure. Muggsy never. Pull it up, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> Jamie's gonna jack say, you in this. Yeah, this, is my, this is my wheelhouse. Three, of basketball you're, you're in Jamie's wheelhouse in a big way right I'm now. Pretty sure Muggsy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he dunked. Okay, okay. Muggsy Bogues. It may not have been a super clean dunk, but it was a dunk. Let's see. On a ten foot hoop. Let's see if he dunked. We'll go with a video. That's my life goal was to say, pull it up, Jamie. Okay, this Spud Webb. Here's Muggsy. Does it have a video of him dunking? 
I don't think so. Well, I've want, never seen it in my you're entire gonna, life. You're going to want to Google Muggsy Bogues. It, yeah, I would have seen it Go- in my life. Google <laughs> Muggsy Bogues dunk. I, he I did, did Google that. Boom, right there. Go Crazy Muggsy Bogues dunk, Jamie. Number two on Google. I'm Let's looking. see. I've got to watch this. <laughs> I've never, ever seen this in my entire life. Dude, he just that's flew not through real. That's not that's Oh, not real. That's, that's in a video game. That's probably not real. Yeah. That's in a video game. No, uh, but he really did. I promise that's you. It's an NBA life. It is, my, my memory is that it wasn't a clean, super clean dunk, but he did get the ball above the rim with his hand on it. We're going to get to the bottom of this, ladies and gentlemen. Really, Jamie will get to the this bottom is, of this. This is happened. pretty essential. If we don't <laughs> solve this, this is um, a failure of a there's podcast. A, there's a big difference, I think, between team sports where, you know, you could have an advantage of having a, a Spud Webb or a Muggsy Bogues, a very mobile, agile kind of guy mm-hmm. who can set plays up versus a guy like Shaq, big giant guy who can, you know, get in the way of things. And mm-hmm. I think there's all sorts of advantages and disadvantages at size. When you're talking about individuals against individuals, that's where things get weird. And then when you're talking about combat sports... That's where, like, people have just tr- – there's some people that just have these tremendous advantages. Like, you know what Paul Daly is? hmm Ridiculous power. hmm Like, almost unfair. Mm. Like, he, he hits guys and just obliterates yeah, them. Yeah, but you know that's not just strength. It's power. technique. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, sure. also, it's also geometry, body geometry. Yes. Right? Yes. A lot of skinny dudes like me have power. Some, yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Right? And a lot of big... Tommy mu- Hearns was the best yeah. example, well, right? Yeah, a bunch of them. But it? he's also, like, this wide, and then his waist is like this, and this angle just... I've thought it's... I've actually, I've actually thought it's shoulder width. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you get that this torque. This wide, yeah. and then oh, yeah, the waist yeah, yeah. like this. Mm-hmm. So the, sh- the shoulder is like that yeah. d- torque. Yep, exactly. I mean, it's just crazy. You have more to swing yeah. that way, yeah, right? Oh, for sure. To, wide shoulders To rotate around the spine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oftentimes equate, especially when they learn striking sports at an early age, yep. they learn how to develop that snap and fluidity to and their a, strikes. And a lot of muscle-bound guys don't. Don't, yeah. Right. Yeah. So... I, or if they do, they have it for like I think you 30 need, I seconds. want you to go talk to Dana and get this get this going. We need we need uh, height uh, divisions. We need um, we need testosterone, you know, divisions. It's too complicated. Testosterone level divisions. We're not have estrogen that. level divisions. I think we're we are literally one generation away from being able to use CRISPR and all these new genetic engineering tools to make people whatever style of person you want Mm -hmm. i think you're going to be able to develop six foot four super athletes that look like anthony joshua or or vitaly klitschko or vladimir klitschko you're going to be able to make those now what i would give for bionic knees right your knees are fucked up that never well they're not they're okay they're they're problematic but i can i can function fine but they could go out at any time yeah you know what i mean if you never had to worry about that Mm -hmm. you never had to worry right can you imagine well if you could just redo it but I'm telling you what they what we were talking about before the podcast, what they're doing now with stem cells, with soft tissue injuries, it's tremendous. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really amazing. It's never happened before. What they're able to do to people that have meniscus injuries is literally shoot stem cells in there and you regenerate meniscus tissue. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just never happened mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is baby steps. I think what we're at right now is really, really young. And oh, I yeah. think 20, 30 years from now, because 20 years ago, they, they didn't really use it at all. 20 years from now, I think it's going to be insane. They're going to be able to, I mean, they regenerated a woman's bladder using her skin tissue. They, they built her a bladder. She had bladder cancer. Mm. They built her a bladder mm-hmm. and then reinstalled it in her body. Now she has a functional bladder that came out of her own body that they regenerated. Yeah. I think they're going to be able to do that with tendons and ligaments oh, and yeah. all sorts of tissue. I believe it. And hopefully, this is really promising, they're going to be able to do that with brain tissue. So people that have had brain injuries, people that have had CTE, they're hopefully going to be able to use some of these therapies to regenerate brain tissue. Wow. Yes, hmm. that's huge. Neuroregenesis is yeah. like that's that's the promise line. God bless him. You know, I don't mm. know anything about science. I'm just a complete idiot when it comes to math and science. But man, just go for it. And by the way, as far as universities, you know, I'm I am the harshest critics of universities generally. But well, mostly, what I'm talking about is actually the humanities and social sciences. When I do that, what goes on in the biology building, the chemistry building, the physics building, I don't know. But I know that what comes out of them is a better life for me. <laughs> Mm. Right. And all of us. Right. They're making the stuff that oh, you're yeah. talking about. And mm-hmm. so go for it. And so, you know, renegade universities, not we're not going to do no science. We're going to let we're going to let Harvard and MIT keep going. Have at it, guys, you know, because you're doing great stuff. I have no critique of that. As far as I know, there's nothing going on there that's wrong. But 
It's just the humanities and social sciences that are utterly corrupt. Well, we got way off the track here. We, what we were talking about initially was Jordan Peterson, what oh, you yeah. disagree with him when it there comes to gender, and what you agree with him when it comes to the suppression mm -hmm. of expression of professors and all the people worried about being called racist and sexist right. and anything else stifling free speech. So what he's facing is even worse that, than what goes on in the United States, in a sense, in that it's, it's now legal persecution. He is actually, you know, it's, it's against the law to not use these gender pronouns in your class, um, which is, that's suppression of speech, that's suppression of academic freedom. It's a complete violation of those things, in fact. And that's, that's totalitarian. I mean, there's nothing, no two ways around it. My uncle, at Canada has these, these laws, yeah. right? And they have a Human Rights Commission, I think it's called, or Human Something Commission. Yeah, Human Rights Council. Council, and they do, it's like a, this body of people who sit there and decide who should have a website or not. And my uncle, this actually happened to him about 10 years ago, he was accused of being a Holocaust denier. Uh, because, and I don't even know exactly what he was saying on there, but he's a Ukrainian, and I think he was sort of just defending these Ukrainians who were accused of being Nazis during the World War II. I don't know. doesn't matter, even if he were a Holocaust denier, he should have his website, right? The Canadian, you go to that URL, it's shut down, and in fact, they put a banner now. It says, this is now, like, controlled by the Canadian government or something. Whoa. Oh, yeah, no, they have no free speech in Canada. I mean, there's no, there's no sort of doctrine, legal or otherwise, in Canada of free speech. It's bad, and that's what Jordan Peterson's facing. It's because he's Canadian. This would not happen in the United States until, of course, you know, the sociologists take control, and then they will have these laws, but we don't have them here. So he actually could go to prison. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. He could go to prison for not saying zur in his class. There was an article that Vice published that someone linked to me today about this that I did not read yet because I announced that Jordan is going to be returning to the podcast and someone was saying that his interpretation of these laws is greatly exaggerated. See if you can find that. It's a very recent it's, Vice article. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. And illegal means you can go to prison ultimately. I right? don't think Jordan's wrong, and I don't think yeah. he would exaggerate. No, no, no. I looked into this. It's illegal because th that, mean, that matters a lot to me. Of right? course. Yeah. So yeah. I am 100% in solidarity with him on that. Um, and he's completely right that the state, no one should be telling him to what to say in his classroom. And certainly he shouldn't be going to prison for it or being threatened in any way legally. Even well, if it's just a fine. A fine, right? People don't understand this. It's incredible how people don't understand that... Everything the state does is enforced by the threat of ultimate violence, right? So my mother even said this recently. She said, oh, it doesn't. It, there's no violence with parking tickets. They just send you a fine. I said, oh, really? So if you get the fine and you don't pay it, what happens? Oh, we get another notice and then another notice, right, mom? And then another notice. And then finally, what happens? Corinne Gaines, this black woman in Maryland a couple years ago, this is exactly what happened. She got a bunch of traffic tickets and she refused to pay them. And ultimately, what happened? The SWAT team came to her house, and, and she pulled a gun, and sh they shot her in the head. That was over traffic fines. Okay, that's what happens. That's what it means to make something illegal. At the end of the day, for, the, for it to be meaningful as a law, the state has to use lethal violence to enforce it. Or the potential for lethal yeah. violence. In other words, if you don't pay your taxes, even if it's you know $100 in taxes, ultimately... Otherwise, the law is meaningless, right? Right. They have to, either, they have to put you in prison or kill you. <laughs>